What up gang and welcome back. As it's Christmas time, there are a million different content creators coming out with their favorite gift guides for the 2021 Christmas season. And so I wanted to do something that was just a little bit different, something a little bit more specific. And so here are my favorite gifts to either treat yourself to or treat your loved one to that are going to help improve the overall experience of street photography in winter. But also that's gonna allow us to go out and shoot more. It's gonna help us develop our craft. It's gonna help us become a better photographer, which as we all know, at the end of the day is the one and only goal become the best photographers we can. We spend thousands of pounds on new cameras, new lenses, just really expensive kit. But we don't often think about the tiny little things that are gonna just make the experience just more enjoyable as a whole. And so today we are going to change that. And I'd also love your input. If you have any ideas that would help other photographers who are going out shooting in the cold, then drop them in the comments below. I would love to hear it. I'm sure the rest of the gang would love to hear it too. In the description below, there are links to all of these products. Some of them are affiliate links, but most of them aren't because I want to recommend products that I genuinely find useful that I think you could benefit from too. And yeah, like I said, if there are any products that you personally would recommend, then drop them below. And if you want to skip around, there are four different sections. We've got camera related, winter comfort, supplements, and miscellaneous. So skip around below. Let's get to it. And so to kick things off, we've got this amazing, wonderful little bag from Wandered and I absolutely love it. On days that I don't wanna have a big rucksack kind of hunkering me down and I'm going out, probably seeing friends or something, I wanna have a bag that's small enough to kind of look a bit inconspicuous, but big enough to be able to carry everything that I need. And not only that, I've got this smart quick release system, which means that you can have it. Let me do a quick demo. And so you can be walking along, you need to get your camera out, super easy, super simple. But let's say you go into a cafe because it's cold outside. You don't want to spend all of your time outside. Take your bag off. Done. It is the easiest bag I've ever used. And it also looks super inconspicuous. Look at that. It doesn't look like a camera bag. And yeah, as I've probably said a million times, I absolutely love this bag. There were others on the market that I found. They were too big. They looked like you, were, you had a big kind of like sling. Maybe you, you had a kid or something. You needed all of the bottles and whatever. This though, fantastic. Love it. Gift number two, I've said it a million times before, is this wrist wrap. I've said it before and I'll say it again, if you don't have this, you are missing out, trust me. We've all decided that wrist wraps are infinitely better than neck straps. Neck straps are big, they're bulky, they take a long time to get on and off, and they hurt my neck. And this little thing is the antithesis, I think that's the right word, of neck straps. It is fantastic. Firstly, it is so easy to get on and off. That is, that is it, I'm ready to shoot. It is glued to my hand, which is absolutely perfect because when you go out shooting, you need to have your camera in your hand to take photos. This encourages you to keep it in your hand and to not stick it around your neck and to wander around. I, I absolutely love it. This thing is game changing. And also super importantly, it is so easy to get off. I can then put my camera down. I can then take a sip of my coffee if my left hand gets tired from drinking coffee. And having this on my wrist honestly feels like second nature. I cannot go out shooting without it. I feel, I feel naked without my little wrist wrap. And plus, if you're ever sat around bored and you don't wanna go on your phone, I play with this so much. I'm always just fiddling with it. I'm gonna keep it on for the rest of this video. That's how much I love it. The third camera related gift, spare batteries. In winter, your batteries die quicker. If you're going out to shoot for a day and you only take one battery that's in your camera, you are shortchanging yourself because it'll get to a point where either you're out of battery or you're trying to conserve battery and you're not taking shots that you alternatively would take. And you just don't want to limit your creativity because you don't have a battery. And it's especially true in winter because due to kind of how batteries work, there's lots of little chemical reactions going on inside. And these chemical reactions create a current. And due to the cold weather, it means that the batteries have less kind of heat energy or there's less heat energy within the chemicals and so it means that the batteries then struggle to create a threshold current to then power our devices and so that is why your batteries die sooner in winter and why you definitely need to pick up if you don't have one spare two spares and a special tip if you're ever out in somewhere super cold and your phone dies at like six percent or something if you get it and you just put it underneath your armpit for a couple of minutes, wait for it to warm up. You can then often get enough heat energy into your phone to get the battery working again, to then make a quick call to say, yo, this is what's happened, or please, um, lost a mountain, come help me. Top tip. And finally, the last thing on our camera-related gift guide list, 
a cleaning kit. It is so vital to clean your lenses. So many people have such dirty kit that it genuinely affects the image quality and you're wondering, how is my really expensive lens producing this kind of image? You need to get a blower to blow off the dust off your lens, off your sensor, and there'll be muck and grime when you accidentally touch or some of you deliberately touch your lens, at which point you can get some of this stuff, which just one or two sprays, cleans it up, and you're good to go. Your lenses look infinitely sharper and your image quality is just so if you haven't got one already get one of these we are now on to the winter comfort section which is so so important and it's definitely an area that i previously overlooked last year i didn't really go out and shoot very much because i was like it's cold it's horrible and i, I don't really want to go through that and so i was thinking okay how can i make it more bearable this year and there's a couple of things that i've found that have particularly kind of allowed me and pushed me to go outside and the number one thing that really gets me whenever I'm shooting in winter is cold hands. I hate it. I love having my hands do what I want them to do. I spent a bunch of time Googling what are the best gloves for photography. And I was just coming up with loads of different answers with super big bulky gloves that probably feel like you're touching your camera through a cloud. And they were clearly written by people who weren't photographers. And so I found these, which are from The Heat Company. And so far, they've been fantastic. They not only have kept my hands warm, you can use a touch screen with tips of your fingers, but I can also use my camera pretty much as I want to. And you might be saying, okay, bro, whatever, they're just thin gloves. But these gloves have one hack, and that is this pocket in the back of your hand. And so what this pocket allows you to do, which brings us on to the next point, is to put these in, little hand warmers. And these little hand warmers are honestly going to be game changing if you haven't used them before. They're essentially just little packs that you, I think you just, wangle them around and they just produce heat for like six to eight hours. Stick them in the back of your, your new gloves or you can put them in internal pockets, kind of as close to your skin as possible. And then it just feels like you've got a little radiator right up against your skin, which keeps you warm, which is, I, I found them invaluable. When I've been doing client shoots, I have found these to make it bearable when staying outside when it's like zero degrees Celsius for six hours. They have honestly changed the game. So you've got to get some if you haven't tried them already. There's also reusable ones. So if you're environmentally friendly, you can use them. They're not quite as effective, but it's better for the environment. So yeah, link, link below for those. We are now on to the third item in the winter comfort section, and that is hats. Hats are absolutely key to keeping you warm. And if you're not already wearing hats, this will hopefully change your mind. So I'm a big advocate, as you can probably tell in all my videos. I've got a Cadbury World cap, I've got a McLaren cap, and more recently, I've got my own branded backdrop caps, which link in the description if you're interested. But now I'm gonna explain why I think baseball caps are tiers above every other hat. So number one, baseball caps keep your head warm. Shock. Oh yeah, but beanies are better. No, beanies fall short in these two other sections. So hear me out. I, like probably many of you, have big eyes. And I absolutely hate it when it's raining, snowing, sleeting, and it is going straight into my eyes, making it like painful to be outside. And so I absolutely love it when the peak of my cap does a fantastic job at keeping stuff kind of from going into my eyes and stopping it from feeling like I'm going through laser eye surgery when walking along the River Thames. And what's also amazing is that they work just as well in summer to stop obviously sunlight coming in and blinding you. And you may say that sunglasses are better and to some extent, you're probably right. However, I absolutely hate looking through my viewfinder when I've got sunglasses on. It just, my exposure is just always whack and it's just not a very good experience because I'm constantly just lifting them up and down and I just prefer having a baseball cap. And so there are a million different options for you to choose with baseball caps, but if you want to support Backdrop, then link in the description below. And so supplements are typically associated with sports and fitness, but there's a whole subset of supplements called nootropics. And nootropics whole aim is to help improve cognitive performance and to make your brains work a bit quicker. And before we get into this, none of this is health advice. Always talk to your doctor. This is just what I take. And if this is of interest to you, you should go out and do your own research. All the supplements I'm gonna be talking about are firstly legal, they are not psychoactive, and they're also naturally occurring. We, we all take caffeine, we all love caffeine, and caffeine is one example of a nootropic. So you can get all of these in your diet, you probably have to eat a lot of certain things, but they are possible to get naturally. And so let's kick things off with the thing that I personally like the most, which is 
Lion's Mane. And so Lion's Mane is a mushroom supplement that promotes neural growth factor in your brain. And this may help recall, it may help brain fog, and it also produces anti-inflammatory effects. And when I take it, I feel like I'm sharper. I feel like I'm able to recall words quicker. I feel like I'm able to explain things more concisely and accurately. And I feel like I put a bit more effort into the things that I do. And it's something that I kind of will take for a while and then I'll go away from it and then come back to it. And every time I come back to it, I always feel a slight difference. And obviously they are mushrooms, but they won't make you high. So lion's mane. And so the second item we've got is coenzyme Q10. Sounds a bit scientific, but it's quite simple really. Our bodies produce ATP and ATP is the energy source of the body. And when producing ATP, there's a whole bunch of different molecules and enzymes and different things our body uses to kind of have a chemical reaction chain which ultimately results in the production of ATP. And within that production chain, there are going to be molecules and enzymes that aren't as abundant as everything else. And therefore these are the bottlenecking ingredients, I suppose, into the production of ATP. And one of them, typically, is coenzyme Q10. And so I take this to reduce brain fog, and also it has a little bit of an effect in terms of performance. It allows your mitochondria, which produce the most ATP in your cells, to be able to work a bit more efficiently. And so I typically take this in conjunction with the lion's mane and have enjoyed using it so far. And finally, there is zinc, which I find really helps with my sleep. Zinc has been known to improve your immune system, which is obviously good at this time, um, and it has certain effects on men, which if you want to research it, you can research it. But yeah, I take it for my sleep because I typically have a lot of deep sleep. I don't have a lot of REM sleep, which is your kind of dream state, which is kind of mental recovery type sleep. I've got this really cool ring, which tracks my sleep data, and every time it's like, you need to get more REM sleep and zinc helps me to kind of have more REM sleep. And it also means I have the maddest dreams on it, which I really enjoy. I love waking up having a good old dream. And so, zinc. And so we are now onto the miscellaneous stuff and I'm just gonna freestyle this. I have got this notepad and this notepad, I've, well, it's my third one. I've had three generations of it and I cannot describe to you how amazingly impactful this thing is. It is absolutely incredible. I will probably do a whole video on this, but any idea that you have, any podcast you listen to, any thought you have, you, you can write it down wherever you are. It fits perfectly in shirt pockets, and I absolutely love it. I take it with me everywhere I go. And I honestly think that a lot of my success has been due to this book. We have many, many ideas a day. We hear many good things, but we forget it like that. But with this, you can remember it, you can come back to it, you can keep discussing ideas and build upon thoughts you previously had. I cannot recommend this book highly enough. Get it. The next thing on our miscellaneous list are blue light blocking glasses. You've probably seen a few different creators wearing these like wacky see-through looking glasses, but they actually have quite a cool function. So as the name suggests, they block blue light and these are supposed to help with sleep. And so how do they work? We as humans are built to sleep when it's dark. We have a bunch of different systems and hormones that control when we sleep. And a lot of them are regulated by blue light. I'm not entirely sure why it's blue light, but it kind of makes sense because when it's daytime, that's when there's a lot more blue light than any other time, I guess. Um, and then as it gets into the evening, we then start having more and more red light or less blue light as opposed to more red light. And when our bodies are exposed to blue light, it inhibits the production of melatonin, which is what induces sleep. And so by blocking blue light from our screens and our devices, we are able to start triggering the production of melatonin, which means that when we go to sleep, we're able to actually go to sleep. There's been far too many times I've been working late into the night and I've gone to bed and I've just been sat staring at my ceiling being like, why am I here? What am I doing? I just want to be asleep. There's nothing more that I want to be doing than being straight KO'd, right? But if you're color grading, these have a very slight tinge to them. I'm not sure whether you can really see. See how it's only reflecting blue light? That means that whenever you're working on stuff, you typically make it much warmer than it needs to be. So do not color grade on it, otherwise you will be in the morning, redoing it, not having a great time. So, blue light blocking glasses, good for sleep, good fun. And the last thing on our miscellaneous list is printing your photos. I have got so many photos 
that I absolutely love that I've got printed out and it is so fun to look through them. And this is especially amazing when it's winter time, when you're stuck inside and you can't, you don't really feel inspired to go outside. But when you literally see your favorite photos just blown up, looking so beautiful, it makes you think, I wanna go outside, I wanna take photos. Although it can get quite expensive, I, I love it. I have, I've been converted. I need to find somewhere to hang it up out here. And so there's a million different local print houses. If you're UK based, I'll put my favorite one in. And yeah, I cannot recommend it highly enough. If anyone has any recommendations as to what's the best way to be able to flick through your prints, I would absolutely love, I'd love to know. So that concludes our winter street photography gift guide. If you have any comments that you think that I've either missed something vital out or there's something that you particularly love that you think is gonna change the game for other street photographers, put them in the comments below. We are here to help each other out. We, as a collective gang, are going to be the best photographers we can be in 2022. That is the goal. That is the only goal that matters, is to get better, to improve, and we are gonna do it together. I think that's everything. Um, obviously, like, comment, subscribe. Um, Follow me on Instagram. I've made a conscious decision that I'm gonna be posting more, I'm gonna be giving more tips, and yeah, we are going to do this together. Um, so yeah, until next time. <laughs>